Okay, so the next section is looking at conditional statements. Conditional statements are basically true-false options. Or true-false, if it's false, do this. If it's true, do this. And we always assume that if we've got to a true option, that's always going to be what we'll go through first. And only if it's false, we'll do that. And the false parts are often optional. So if we look at this little example here, in Co-Academy, so if we're sleepy, then we sleep in, else we start our day. So what we're making the assumption is that we're going to do this sleepy more often because we're more likely to be sleepy, so it's more likely something is going to happen to be true. This actually just affects how quickly our code actually operates behind the scenes. Realistically, it doesn't make that much of a difference for what we're going to be using it for. But later on down the scenes, if you're wanting to have things most efficient, you need to actually think about that. And there's another option called a switch statement, which lets us choose between multiple options. So we're going to get started with this. Remember, there's a cheat sheet for more information if we need to. So we've got a keyword called F. You've probably noticed like in this one, like the light blue, sort of a little F has popped up. And that's a keyword, it's a reserved word that we can't sort of use for other things in JavaScript. And it's the same in most other programming languages. Now we have a set of brackets. This is a condition. And so whatever's inside that bracket, these brackets needs to work out to give us an answer that's either true or false. And then we have a set of curly brackets and everything between these curly brackets is what's gonna happen if it is true. So this one here, if true is equal to true, so it's always going to do this, it'll print out this message. So we got that. So parentheses in the curly brackets, which is called also called a block statement. And inside the parentheses, that's what's going to be our condition. And so if it works out to be true, it evaluates to be true. Then it runs what's inside those curly brackets in the section. So let's have a go at making one. So we're going to use what it's asking us to do. Using the let keyword, declare a variable named sale and assign the value true to it. So let sale be assigned to true. And that one's run. It's not actually console.logging anything, so it's not printing out any output. Now we're going to create an if statement. So let's just do that. Let's just get a basic structure set up. So I've got my if statement, I've got my block statement for if it's true, and I've got my parentheses for my condition. And if sale equals true, now to do an exact equals, we put three equals next to each other. And we're going to console.log time to buy with an exclamation mark. Let's work that out. Now we can actually leave off the sale bit here. Because Sale is already true, so it just already works out that answer. Now let's have a look for number three. We want to change this to be false. Now we see nothing is printed out because we don't have any false option. So now we've got an if else. So if it's true, it does this section. Else, if it's not true, so if it's false, do the second code block. So we've got let sale equals true, sale is assigned to false. If sale, else, time, and we want to print log or print out, time to wait for a sale. So let's take what we've got there.
units printed out, time to wait for a sale. Now comparisons, so these are when we're going to use numbers. So we've got, if it's less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, equal to and not equal to. Note not equal to starts with a little exclamation mark. So 10 is less than 12, gives us the answer true. Apples is equal to oranges, it's going to give us false. So let's create a variable called hunger level and set it to be 7. And we're going to use an if else statement and it's got two things to print out. So if it's greater than 7, time to eat. So if Let's just get our basic structure set up. So if hunger level is greater than seven, print out time to eat. And yep. Note I'm indenting the code because each time you get these curly brackets, I've sort of indented that console.log. Just makes it our code easier to read. And what do we want to say? We can eat later. Let's run that. And it's told us we can eat later. If I were to modify that to say be eight, it's now time to eat. Now, logical operators, these things cause a fair bit of problems. Essentially, it's joining two conditions together. So, and basically means both different options need to be true, or one of them need to be true. And we've got the not operator, which basically makes anything true becomes false, and false becomes true, so it inverts them, switches them around. So if we look at this little example, if stoplight is equal to green and there are no pedestrians, then we can go. Otherwise, so if that is false or that is false, then we stop. So basically both things need to be true to do this. Otherwise, we're going to stop. So there's only one. So there are four different possible things. So true, 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 false. False true, false false. So the only one that gets into this section is if true and true. All the other three options end up here. So you can look at what's called a truth table to help you out with this sort of concept. It takes a bit of time and it's where a lot of our logical errors actually occur. Now day is equal to Saturday or the day is Sunday. So if it's this or this, then it's the weekend. So if, but if both are false, then it's basically the work, the work day. So both need to be false for it to go down here. If any of them are true, it will do this one. And not so excited, not, not excited, excited so excited is false. So it flip, flips it around. So let's have a look at our things here. So we've got two variables, mood and tiredness. So we're going to do an if else statement. If mood is sleepy and tiredness is greater than eight. So let's get that started. So mood equals, remember we use three equals. So mood is sleepy and so tiredness level is greater than eight. So if both conditions are true, so that's why I've got the and, we're going to console.log, time to sleep. Otherwise, so else, so often when you see the word otherwise, it means an else statement. Not bedtime yet. Let's see how we go. Good. And if we try an or, 
tells us it's time to sleep because one of those two was true. In this case, it was sleepy. Now, if we change it up to being like a nine, it will actually run that as well. Okay, truthy and falsy. I don't really use these too much, but they are quite useful. It basically sees is something what we assume to be empty. So when you create a number like, or a word count, by default, it's zero. So it considers zero to be an empty. And that sort of carries out to be false. So are there any word ca words counted? If it's zero, it gives us the answer false. That's as a falsy. If it's anything more than that, it gives it zero. Or if we have a string, an empty string piece, with no writing in it, that gives us a false answer as well. So let's have a look at what we're doing here. So we've got a variable called my variable. It's got I exist. So this will give us true because there is something in there. If otherwise, it won't print out anything. So empty strings are either zeros, if it's null or undefined, if it's not a number, so you expect a number and it doesn't actually give you an answer, or an empty string. So a string with nothing, nothing written in it. So this one here, number of apples is zero. So it tries that out, it gives us the answer false. Because it says no apples left. So we're going to change the value of word count so that it should be truthy. So let's say we want to have answer of 10. So it's told us word count has worked out to be true, so it's got something in there. So it says, great, you started your work. Now, change the value of favorite phrase so that it is a string, still a string, but falsy. So we're just going to change that to be an empty string. So it's definitely empty. So it's got no content. That means it evaluates to being false. Okay, truth and false assignment. So this is basically storing values. So let default name. So there's nothing stored in that default name at this point. So username is false, so there is no username. So username gets saved into default name. Otherwise we store it, we get them, we set the default name to be stranger. So it only works if the username has been defined. We can do it as a bit of shorthand by using logical operators. It gets a bit sort of messy and confusing here. So you can just write this out sort of in full using more detailed if else statements. So let default name equal username or stranger set. If there's no username, set the default name to be stranger. So we're going to use that little short circuit to write a value, to assign a value called writing utensil. So let writing utensil equal tool. So it's going to use that variable up here. Or the default value of pen. And if we run that, so it's got the pen is mightier than the sword. So it's used uh, string interpolation, so it's stored whatever's in writing utensil into here because tool was empty. So let's change this tool to be a marker because we want to use a marker. So now this was set, it had something in there, so it's used marker. Instead, it uses the first option because it was true, so it saves it here. It doesn't worry about this part because it's already got a true result. Okay, the ternary up operator. So it's a sort of shorthand way of writing all of this. So it compresses all of that into one row. So is nighttime? Question mark. So if is nighttime true, do this. And then rather than all the like curly brackets, we put a, a colon and then the false information. So, is nighttime 
true or false. First option is true, colon, and then second option. Note this time you do not put a semicolon after each instruction. So use the conditions which evaluate to true or false. So we're going to edit this first one to use a ternary operator. So we're going to get rid of is locked, question mark. Now we don't want that semicolon there. We can have a colon there. And we're still in that last semicolon there. Now this probably should all go in one line. So is locked. So if it's locked, print out this option. If is locked is false, do this one. So it tells us we don't need a key to open the door. And the second block, so this one here. So sometimes to make it easier to sort of read, you might break it up into multiple rows. So I've got my if statement is correct, the colon, and then the false statement. So it makes it sometimes a little bit easier to read. And let's do our last one. So note this one, we've got to keep it in the brackets. Let's actually try that without the brackets and see what happens. That actually still works, but I would recommend, you know, possibly keeping them inside the brackets just to make it a bit easier to read. So anything that goes inside those conditions. So if else statements, so it's like joining them there. So if having multiple options, so we've got our stoplight is yellow. If it's red, we stop. Otherwise, if it is yellow, we tell it to slow down. Otherwise, that means it's not red, it's not yellow, it must be green, we go. Otherwise, hey, something's gone wrong sort of a default error message. So let's take this. So we've got spring, summer, spring, winter and fall. So what we're going to have is our first one, logging season equals winter. So we've got an invalid season. So we're going to leave that as it is. But we're going to put another else if curly brackets I'm just going to tidy this up so it's a bit neater. Console.log, I'm just going to put a blank one in there. So if season is equal to winter, I'm going to print out a winter message. Now, note with this one here, we've got slash and then the apostrophe. This is an escape character because if I just put that, it would finish the string. So I'll put a slash apostrophe to get the whole text in there. Let's actually tidy up that so it's a bit neater. Let's run this one. We've still got an invalid season, but it has known that it's going to winter. And now we're going to do the same for fall. So I'm going to take that again. and paste it in. Now, I'm going to modify this one to use the double quotes. So now because I've got the double quotes, I don't actually need to have that slash there. So it's full. These are falling. Okay, so it's got that one. And now we need a summer. So we're nearly there. And we want to print out it's sunny. 
and warm because it's summer. Yeah, let's mark that correct. Now, obviously in New Zealand, we might not call it fall, we might have it autumn, so we might do if it's the season is fall or season is equal to autumn. We'll choose that option. So it gives us a few different options. Now, switch is a nicer way of doing all those complex if else statements, so it sort of combines everything together. So we've got Let's just choose a few different options. So think about this papaya. We've got if, if else, if else. We've got to write all these combinations quite a few times. So the switch, let's just simplify that. So we have a grocery item. So switch grocery item. So we give it the variable we want to sort of check. We have a case. So if it matches tomato, do this. Break means finish it so it breaks out of the switch. If we didn't have that, it would just jump onto the next line of code. So case, if it's a lime, prints out lime, stops, papaya, break, and we also need a default. So if it's not any of the other options, it tells us it's a default. So it's the one that doesn't sort of work, didn't match anything in our switch. So we're going to have a switch to work out what metal we're going to get. So we're going to have switch. So switch athlete final position. Set of curly brackets. And let's actually just do let's get that up and running. So we've just got that first little step. We're just getting the main switch. So we've got a few different cases. So we've got gold, silver, and bronze. So we've got case. So let's go and check our syntax. And we just put exactly what we want it to match. So we got, we've got first place. Now we use a colon. Now I'm going to tab those in and we're going to log out what's there. You get the gold medal. And we need to put a break command, otherwise it will go on to the next section. So we've got a second. And we're going to have silver. A third. Now I'm going to take out this break and we'll see what actually happens. So see because there was no break here, it jumped onto the second section. So it told us we got the gold and then the silver. So that's why we need the break command at the end of each case. And a final section is we need a default. So some way of checking default. of picking up all the remainders. And that's going to be console.log. And we want to say no medal awarded. What have we got there? Why are we not doing that? Oh, why well, full stop? And that's marking. So it tells us we've got a gold medal. In that. So to summarize for this section, we've got if works out if it's true or false, if else, we can add more conditions by using the logical operators, comparisons, less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, equal to, not equal to, and an or, not switches, tenary, don't really want to use those too much and the switch statements and if else statements. So that concludes
conditional statements and if else statements, one of the, probably the most useful features in programming you'll use.